my name is Tom Shu, and I will welcome to my blog and today we're going to be talking about light meters and controlling light. With a light meter you can work with flash. With your camera's meter you can't work with flash and measure it. Okay, You just can't measure it. So what I want to have is full control over what my lights are doing and I want to have predictable control. That means that I don't have to chimp and look at the back of my camera and, and make adjustments and flail around not knowing exactly what I'm getting in front of my clients, my models, my family, anyone. I just want to know what my lights are going to do and, and I can predict a picture. In order to do that, you have to have some tools just beside the camera and a flash. And in this case, we're working with the Sekonic 758DR. Let me come in a little closer. This meter is two light meters built in one and it also has a pocket wizard built in. Okay, I'll turn the light on so you can see. Basically with a light meter all you need to do is to set the working ISO and the shutter speed. So you never want to go over the sync speed of your camera. So if your camera syncs at you know 250th or 200th, I like to work at 125th because I can hand hold at 125th and it leaves me room to control ambient with my shutter speed if I need to, but that's another topic. So all you need to know is set your ISO, which happens to be 100, and set your shutter speed, which in this case will be 125th. Now the two types of light meters that we have here is an incident light meter. And in my previous blog post I talked about how a diffuse value, a known value, a reference value, is how you determine a proper exposure. Well this measures that diffuse value and sets it for you. What I mean by sets it for you is this meter, this this dome here, this uh, incident light meter, whatever I measure is going to render it as what it is. In this case it's a black piece of paper. So I'm going to take an unknown power quantity off of a flash with my set shutter speed and ISO, I'm going to measure and it's going to tell me what to set my aperture at to get that to render black. Okay, It'll render that square white in the middle and the reason why I have a square there is so that I can lock focus with my autofocus system. Okay, If it's just a black piece of paper I can't lock focus. So first of all is that when I say set a diffuse value I would come to my subject, place this meter underneath their chin, take a measurement, now I know that their face is going to have a proper exposure then it's up to me to set my lights where I want them to get the proper modeling on the face, the light patterns, both eyes lit up but regardless of any of that stuff, whatever the light's hitting it's going to render her skin, if she's a black girl it'll render her skin black, if she's a white girl it'll render her skin white, if she's an Asian girl it will render their skin tone, whatever it actually is so let's measure this black piece of paper and see what we have here. Oh, let me go in a couple more things. This meter has a uh, pocket wizard built in. You can see that we're using the uh, plus transceiver up here. So whenever I measure, it's going to trigger the strobe for me. Importantly, when you're working with these, is to make sure you're in the right mode. Because there's two modes. There's a little dome that's flashing here. It tells me I'm in the illuminance mode. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not covering the light with my shadow and I'll hold it up there and I'll point it right back at my light source I'll take a reading. It's telling me F4. So if I set my camera to F4 okay, so let me grab my camera so I'll set my camera to F4 you know, here it is and we'll make a picture and it will render this backdrop this black piece of paper as a black piece of paper so I'll make a picture and I'll post it up so you can see what I'm talking about so let's lock in made a picture and there we have it. It renders the paper as it actually is. Let me see if I can get this in the frame. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to measure it with a spot meter. Okay. So I know that my diffuse value or say my model's proper exposure on their face to render her face actually as it is is going to be F4. Okay, so that doesn't really matter at this point because now we're just going to concentrate on controlling the background. Okay, so say we want this black piece of paper to go white. 
Do I just keep adding power to it until it goes white? Or can I just set my flash one time and know that I'm going to have a white background? And I'm going to show you how I can do that right now. And I can make it black if I want. Well, first we'll start with white because it's already black. It's pretty simple. So I'm telling you, I can make a black piece of paper white with one shot with no other chimping involved. Let's do it. So I'm going to set my meter to the spot meter mode. Okay, and then I'm going to look through it and I'm going to trigger the flash and measure the background. That's going to tell me what 18% gray is. So I'm going to measure it. It's telling me that if I set my camera's aperture at f3.2, let me get the meter over here. If I set the camera's aperture at 3.2, that I'm going to have that black piece of paper is going to be 18% gray. So I'll make a picture so you can see that. 3.2. Okay, so we're at 3-2. And now, our background is 18% gray. Let's play this back. And again, I'll show you these images when we get up on the uh, internet. So it's, now it's 18% gray. We want it to go white. Now, we don't want it to go so white that it's blown out without any detail. I still want a, a blinky on that white piece of tape. That means that there's detail in the white. So, how do we get to white? Well, we need to go two and two-thirds stops over. Well, depending on what you're using. If you're using film or digital, it changes. But white lives between two and a third and just under three stops over 18% gray. And black lives four and a third to four and two-thirds stops over under 18 percent gray so how am I gonna get there I'm gonna leave my aperture just where it is on my camera okay and then I'm going to um, so we're at 3 2 and now I'm gonna go over in power okay I'm gonna adjust my power two and two-thirds stops over so I'm gonna enter here and we're one two three clicks that's one stop one two three clicks that's two stops and two-thirds this is going to give me my white. Okay. So let's take a picture. Okay. So now if we look at the blinky on the back of the camera, we've taken that white background and we've made it render white. It's a black background rendering white. And the reason why you're getting the black dot in the center is because you can see that cross. There's detail in the whites. Now, if I want to go black, I'll just go back to my 18% gray power setting, which is two and a two-thirds stops down, and I dial the power down four and two-thirds stops, and everything will go black. These are predictable results, and these are the results that you need to be able to create your vision. You need the tools in order to adjust your lights with accuracy, precision, and most of all, to protect your vision. Now, if I was working with color, I can put a gel on it. I know what 18% gray is. So if I go one stop over 18% gray, what is that value? Okay? What's 18 plus 18? Okay? That tells you what percentage it is. So two stops over, what is that? All of these are known numbers and it's all math and it's real simple to understand if you break it down off known values. So I want to thank you for visiting my blog today and until next time, we'll see you soon.